Now we want to talk about distance and midpoint. We've already talked about the rectangular coordinate system, and now we want to talk about how do we find distance and midpoint on that. So the thing to know about distance is that distance is just the straight line connection between these guys and whatever that distance is, right? So it's trying to measure the distance from point to point. So we've got a couple of points here, negative 1, 7, and 4, negative 3. And here's what you need to understand about distance. Distance is really not that bad. Distance is based on the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got this guy right here, but if I were to draw a right triangle like this, with a right triangle, there are certain things that I know. See, when you have a right triangle, you get A and B, and the side that's opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, the longest side always. The Pythagorean theorem says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now let's see how that works for us. We're trying to find that distance, right? We're trying to find just C by itself. So let me just rearrange this. Let's put C squared on the left side. I mean, it is an equation, so it doesn't really matter how this is written. And then to get C by itself, I would just take the square root of both sides. Now, typically we would do plus or minus, but if we're talking about distance, you're not going to have a negative. So that means that C is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So what does that mean for us here in this problem? Well, c is our distance. Right, c is that distance as we go from one point to the other point. And when we look at what a and b are, let's look at that in this diagram. If I say this is a, and this is B. So A is going to be the difference in your X values. So here is what the textbook is going to say. The textbook is going to say to do X2 minus X1 squared because of the square there plus B is the change in your Y. So in order to find that they would say do Y2 minus Y1 and then square that because of the formula. So this is what the textbook is going to say for the distance formula. I mean, they're not wrong, but here's what I say. So D for my distance is the square root. Instead of doing this, I'm going to write delta X. Now, this is the capital Greek letter delta. And typically in math and science, that means the change. So I'm talking about the change in X. And of course, to find change, you would subtract. Plus... And I'm going to write delta y for the change in y. So this is the way I like to do my formula. To me, it's a little bit easier to work and understand, but do what you need to do. So how does that apply here? Well, in this problem, let's find the change in x and the change in y. We're going to square those guys and do some math. All right. So. Look at your change in x. Your x is going from negative 1 to 4. So if you can think about that on a number line, how far apart is negative 1 from 4? And the answer is 5 units, right? You've got 1 unit on the left side of 0, 4 on the right side. So that's a difference of 5. And let's talk about the change in your y. The change from 7 to negative 3. How far apart is 7 from negative 3? Don't add them and tell me that it's 4, because that doesn't make any sense. Think about the number line, right? You've got 7 over here, negative 3 over here, and so that difference is going to be 10. Now, you might say, but doesn't the order matter? If I go from negative 3 to 7, that's a gain of 10. If I go from 7 down to negative 3, that's a negative 10. But the reason I'm not caring about the signs here is because I'm going to be squaring. And when you square a positive or a negative, it's going to be positive anyway. So I just have to work this out. So this is the square root of 25 plus 100. 
the square root of 125, which tells me that my distance, when I break this down, remember we're just simplifying radicals here, so this breaks down to be the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. This guy becomes 5, oops, excuse me, this guy becomes 5 and that guy stays as he is. So we have 5 times the square root of 5. And that's how we find the distance for this guy. Now, there's another thing that we are, that we are concerned with, and that's the midpoint. The midpoint is a lot easier than the distance. Okay, So the midpoint is just going to be the point that is exactly halfway between these two points. Okay, So for your midpoint, we're going to have this. The formula for your midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2 and then y1 plus y2 <clears throat> over 2. You're just going to do the average of each of these. So in the example that we have, I'm going to use capital M for my midpoint. I'm going to take those x-coordinates, I'm going to add them. So what are my x-coordinates? I've got negative 1 and 4, so I'm just going to write negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2, and do the same thing for your y's. Your y values would be 7 plus a negative 3, so that's just minus 3, over 2. Notice the difference here. So with distance, you've got to find the subtraction, find the difference between those guys. For the midpoint, you're just going to take those coordinates and add them together and then divide by 2. The midpoint is the average of the x and the average of the y's. So working this out, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, so we get 3 halves. 7 minus, four, excuse me, 7 minus 3 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's what we say the midpoint is. It's the ordered pair 3 halves, 2. And if you look back at the picture, 3 halves, 2, we'll see 3 halves is 1 and a half, and 2 is this guy right here. So this is the ordered pair 3 halves, 2, which is your midpoint. And what we're saying here with that midpoint is that the distance here is going to be the same as the distance between those two points. So that's your midpoint. So let's work through a few more examples, calculating the distance and the midpoint, and then we're going to do some other extra fun things with them.